All right, first of all, I don't want you to do this. Oh, stop it. The car turns off. It's 100 degrees outside, right? If you take a look right now, it's 99 degrees outside. And here is the interior temperature already. Just shut off the air conditioning. And what's the 12-minute rule? Uh, the 12-minute rule was designed by health experts. They say that's about the amount of time that the average child or animal goes into severe respiratory distress in a hot car. Um, I figured 15 minutes, since I'm a grown person, I can handle that much. But, you know, a kid or a pet can't really tell us what they're going through. So we figured, let's find out. I'm giving you this. Thank you. All right. I don't want to do this. Oh, stop. I have my phone. Call me. All right. Temperature already about 80 degrees. So it is now officially 237, 80 degrees, and 15 minutes to go. Alrighty, just thought I'd take a look at this while I was sitting here waiting. It's now um, been 10 minutes, I mean 5 minutes, sorry, I've got 10 minutes to go. You see that okay? 10 minutes to go. Uh, temperature in the car now is 110 degrees. And um, According to kidsandcars.org, on average, 38 children die in hot cars each year from heat-related deaths after being trapped inside motor vehicles. Even the best of parents or caregivers unknowingly can leave a sleeping baby in the car, and the end result can be injury or even death. They say that it takes less than 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes, for a child with a body weight of less than 50 pounds, also the same for pets, to uh, die of heat stroke. Less than 15 minutes. So, in any case, once again... Um, Hi, honey. Hi, Hello. honey. It's 110 in here. And that's in five minutes? Yeah. 110 in five minutes. It's 99 degrees outside, as I said, on uh, the initial the initial check-in. Um, how are you feeling? Um, I'm incredibly, incredibly hot and sweaty, but the thing is, is that I am just thought about this. I'm just, like, not even strapped in a car seat, because imagine the extra heat of being strapped down and everything. But, yeah, or if you're a pet, if you have a furry coat on. I should probably be wearing a coat if I were really going to make this. Hey, hon, i got to go. The kids want lemonade, ice cold lemon. Got to go. I don't think he's taking this seriously. All right, anyway, eight minutes left. Still 99 degrees outside. And actually, I lied. It's 108. 108 degrees, if you can see that. I'm starting to have a few tremors. That's really interesting. Okay. Okay, this is actually the point where this is totally sucking. I just keep thinking about being a kid and sitting here or being a dog and wondering where everybody went. And I'm actually wearing a cool tank top. I mean, what if a pet would be wearing a fur coat? Okay, this is actually the point where this is totally sucking. Uh, uh, I just keep thinking about being a kid and sitting here or being a dog and wondering where everybody went. And I, I'm actually wearing a cool tank top. I mean, what if a pet would be wearing a fur coat? The old 
I, okay, here's a new one. I can't text. I have just made six mistakes out of the last six words I tried to do. We're still. And that's at, okay, we are at 10 minutes in now. If you see that, that is 10 minutes in, five minutes left to go. I'm thinking I might have to do 20 just to get the full sense of what I'm supposed to be doing here. Temperature in the car is 118, 118. <sighs> yeah, I've done the second. Todd's pretending how harsh she is, but he's really outside pacing back and forth. He's probably harder than I am. Look up symptoms of heat stroke and see if crap texting is one of them. That could just be me. Who knows? Okay. Oh, you know, you think about a child being strapped in a car seat and not being able to move. And that's like so much more intense to me. Or thinking of a pet with her fur coat on. Yet. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? Good. What's the temperature? It's 118. Okay. How you feeling? Like crap. Uh, first thing I've noticed after 10 minutes in here is that my texting, it might I was trying to text something to somebody and my texting ability went down. I had a hard time seeing the words and, be, and thinking straight enough to text. And, you know, I'm not even strapped into a car seat and I'm not, you know coated in fur. So I'm feeling, I'm thinking, given the fact that I do have an advantage here, I should probably do 20 minutes instead. We'll see. To make up for the fact that I am, I am actually probably dressed far more coolly than a child w would be or a, a pet. Well, I'd still like to, I'd still like to have a wife after this, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm just going to look up symptoms of heat stroke now. You know, you're probably hotter than I am. Todd pretends he's such a tough button that he's inside getting lemonade. No. He's sitting outside pacing back and forth worriedly. I knew he would do this, too. He's I probably... was just kidding about the lemonade. I, f I think at this point you're hotter than I am, sweetie. Okay, so... Um, you can just... You can feel it all over. You can feel every pore in your body just like your skin's burning. How much, uh, how much time left? <sighs> This says three minutes, but I don't think it's enough to give the full result. I think I should do longer. All right, let's see. Uh, call me. I'll call you at 15 exactly. Oh, I lied. It's only 117 degrees. I didn't mean to be overly, you know, dramatic. But you think about this. The average, I mean, 15 minutes... I really do think I left Zaki and McLean in the car last summer. I mean, it was in a shaded spot, windows were down and everything, but that was, I was probably in the station for eight minutes. Okay, this says that it's been 15 minutes, 15 minutes in the car, all the windows up in a sunny spot, and it's 117 degrees in the car. Um, at this point, the average child um, or pet could already be suffering from heat stroke and possibly death. Um, I think given the fact that it's been not quite 15 minutes, I think I'm going to add an extra 10 to make sure that at 25 minutes we can tell you exactly how it feels for a child or a dog to be in here. Um, but I do, I, I think about that time that I left the voice in the car, and I think it was for 8 minutes total. But if you think about that, okay, I'm going to set this again for 10, 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. It is currently 2.52, just so you know, so you can see the expansion of time, and I love my cell phone, 
and it's 99 degrees outside. I'm just going to text Todd and tell him I'm going to do another 10. That should flip his lid. I'm going to do... You know the thing that's so scary about this for me is that I have a timer in front of me. I know how long I'm going to be here. I know I just have to make it for this certain amount of time. But if you're a child or you're a pet, you don't know where anyone went. You don't know where the adults went. You don't know when they're coming back. You don't know why they left you here. And so you're just sitting here waiting and waiting. I know I'm going to get out of here. <clears throat> All right. It's currently 117 degrees. Hi, it's Todd here, and uh, Aaron's so brave to do this, and it worried me. I can't even tell you how much it worried me. But what happened is what I was expecting to happen is the camera equipment I was using actually shut down because of the temperature of 118 for duration of time. Systems close down, like your phone. If you leave your phone on a dashboard, it overheats. It'll shut it down to protect the system. So that's what happened. But here's Aaron to tell you what happened next. Hey, Aaron here. So I was enraged when Todd told me that the camera shut off at 18 and a half minutes because I stuck it out. I was there for 25 minutes inside that car at 118 degrees. And this is why I extended it because when we first started, um, zerofatalities.org says that it takes about 12 minutes for a child or a pet to start experiencing a heat stroke and, and distress in a car. So I wanted to see how that felt so that I could talk about it. I thought that it really wasn't enough and so I wanted to go to 25 minutes to really get a sense of what the, you know, these little people go through in our cars. So I was so proud I stuck it out. I made it all the way to 25 minutes and the camera shut off. But here's the two things that I learned. Number one, your mental faculties go way down within about seven minutes. I couldn't text, I couldn't think properly. Um, and you'll probably hear a lot of really irritating, repetitious mumbling on the, on the film if you watch it all. Um, the second thing is this. I can't even imagine what it would be like to not know someone was going to come back for you. I knew Todd was there. I had a timer. Todd paced back and forth. I knew I was getting out at 25 minutes. What if you were a little person or a pet and you didn't know if anyone was going to come back for you? I can't imagine how terrifying that would be. And I'll tell you this, if I ever see a pet or a small child in a car again, I'm going to break the glass. No questions asked. I'll call 911, but I have a roll of duct tape in the car now to protect from shattering glass and I will break the glass. I'll pay for a new window for you, but I'm, I'm getting the kid or the pet out. I hope this helps all of us remember how important this is. And never, ever, ever leave your kids in the car. I think now about the time that I left my sons in the car for seven minutes, and I can never forgive myself. That's all it takes. Thanks for following through with us.